Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. Thanks so much for tuning in this Sunday evening. I really appreciate you guys joining. I'm super psyched to have Sybil Harmony with me. Uh, she's been on my channel before. I really, I really admire Sybil. I, I admire her psychic abilities, her mediumship abilities, but I got to tell you a little secret. She is an amazing energy healer. Amazing. So you guys can check her out. She does reading. She does healings. Uh, she has a really cool book actually called White Rainbows, right? And right. it's really good. It talks about psychic abilities, energetic healing. It's it's really a good primer. It talks about all the things that you need to know about. It's not just about one particular thing. So uh, her information is in the description of this uh, description box. Thank you so much for joining me. Sybil, how are you? I'm I'm excellent. It's an honor to be here. I'm so excited. This is so fun. So I really love watching your political videos. Really amazing. So thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. We've got we got lots going on, you guys. We really do. I've got some sun today. I was I actually went to the pool and went swimming. So my face is oh. a little bit more red than normal. So if you if you guys think that, you know, like it is, it is, it is, it's true. <laughs> oh, I, anyway, I love your spiritual videos too. Oh, Very you. excellent teachings and videos. So oh, those are really fun to watch. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. So, you know, you we're going to get down into politics. You guys know I like to get down into business. I'm just going to say a broad hello to everyone's here. Thank you so much for joining us. Hit us up with your political questions. The, you know, and I know it's been quiet because Friday night, or Friday, E. Jean Carroll's case wasn't broadcasting. And of course, the weekend was kind of quiet. But I'm telling you guys, it's really not quiet. There's so much energy percolating still. It's, it's, I see, and I, I'm throwing this on, on Sybil. This is why I like her. She's so good. She can just roll with it. But I just talking to you and talking to the viewers, I see Jack Smith like burning the midnight oil. Like I see him working weekends, working nights. Like I just checked in for just a minute, you know, and this guy is really, really, really focused. Is that, what do you get when you check into his energy? Um, I get like a, what I would call a person who is a, a winner or a warrior. These are lawyers. These are politicians. These are people who've had past lives where they've been martial artists, where they've been masters at, um, I mean, he's just, I do, I see him burning the midnight oil. I see him very focused. And uh, yeah, when I first looked at him, I was like, awesome. Because some politicians, and they should be, are more like scholars. They're more um, into, you know, he's not really a politician, but he, Lawyers are like that, but this is a lawyer on the right side. And I thought, oh my God, he's going to be amazing. So I'm really, and I see him, I literally see him like by himself focused, burning the midnight oil, like you said, burning a little lamp and writing. Away. Yeah. Well, now he would be on the computer, not, you know, yeah. writing by a lamp. Metaphorically, yeah. when we say burning the midnight oil, that's what they're talking about, right? Is the oil of the yeah. lamp. He might have done things in like he was um, help uh, prosecuting war crimes or something. Mm -hmm. Yes. In somewhere in Europe or the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure where, but um, he likes protecting people. He likes coming to the rescue. And I feel like a kind of a like a Paul Revere energy with him or wow. something. Wow. I, yeah. What's he wow. Wow. Something nice. like that. I feel like he has some. So usually when people have a past life pattern, a lot of times they'll come in and they'll use that information or what they did. And they'll, they'll keep doing that coming in and serving. And he's like a, you know, a light warrior. He's like really strong and focused and he's not messing around. I'd be worried if he was after me. I would be too. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure those people in the ha in the Hague that he that he persecuted or prosecuted were were also worried. And I think I think Trump is worried. Um, and yeah. um, 
I think they're all worried because they know that he has this sense of professionalism about him. He knows his business and he's not bought, right? He's one of the few that he, that he's just not bought. You, you can't yeah. buy him. He doesn't, he does not care. He, he does not care. Life. He doesn't live an, an, a big life. You know, he doesn't live a luxury life. He lives a very kind of civil servant salary life. Uh, he doesn't care about the trappings or the power. He doesn't care about that. I love the way you brought in his past lives because I see that he's that he's done this over and over again. You know, like not maybe with Trump, but yeah, with his community or his country. He has this loyalty of his country or his community. And what's right? What's just? What's justice? Right. Yeah. And he has a very good sense of that. He he yeah. he doesn't. And it's not skewed. And that's so important because so many politicians are bought and sold. Yeah. Which is really sad. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm just going to get this out there because Sybil and I were here earlier chatting. I, I just want her to tell you um, a little bit about what she saw, because I think it's fascinating the way she, the way she sees, the way she works versus the way I work. I just, I think it's fascinating. So tell them what you were seeing about McCarthy and MTG. Yeah, I was looking at the debt limit and I saw that they were um, my well, my guides show me visions and I have symbols mean something to me. So that's how they sometimes they talk to me or I just get a download or a feeling. But they show me symbolically that I was at a school. It was a school. That's Earth. Earth is a school. So they're in Earth school and they decided to play a game with the debt limit. So they have these two like tennis balls, but hers was big and swelled up. She wants to be more controlling. She's controlling him. But so they're bouncing along and they're like, let's play a game with the debt limit. And they bounced and they were. And so then I saw him like giving out like he, and he did put a, a proposal up for a vote and it passed in the house, not going to pass in the Senate and Biden's not going to sign it. But I saw him putting out these, flimsy proposals they didn't look like there was a lot to them and and um he might even put different things out to different people but because he's kind of like he when i look at him the guides show me it's like he's just speaking of for sale he has no power he's up for the the, the biggest bidder and now the biggest is is the mega party in 45 that's who he's sold himself to. And so Marjorie Taylor Greene is, uh, you know, controlling him. So anyway, these the balls bounced behind the garbage, the trash can. They didn't go in the trash can. So I was like, huh, they're not going to trash it. But they are they were hiding back there. So they're going to play a game and try to get what they want by by making it a game. But um, I was thinking, I, was, I think I was talking to you a couple – weeks last month, like just thing, like he's such a, I don't know if I can say that word <laughs> oh, for entertainment purposes only. Good idea. Like worse than a street whore. I'm sorry. It just, I was just like, what's he the really name? Is. I can't say those words. I was just like, Oh my God. He just, uh, okay. So, but anyway, I see them playing a game. And then today when I was looking at it again, I was seeing, um, and, and I don't want to get people angry at 45 or angry. It's not about hating them. It's just about looking at the truth of like what's happening with our country because it isn't about, you know, getting, oh, like we're going to, you know, hating somebody, but it's about looking at like what's really going on. And if we know, that's why I do this, because if we know, hopefully we can, avert what's happening. Or even when I feel like I'm talking about something, I feel like then I start hearing about it other places. I'm like, what? Yes. And I don't yes. think it came from me. I think it's just the energy that I'm tapping into yes. of what's happening anyway. So we need to be honest. We need to call a thing a thing or we how can we heal? That's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to get people to hate them or something. But anyway, um, he has no power, which is really sad and pathetic. But he's being controlled. And then I saw today I looked again. I'm like, I told my guys, you also okay, tell me what's going on now. And I saw behind this all is 45. He wants to crash. I mean, they showed me like behind the door, like where are they going? 
Because I saw him in a little suit. He's like all happy. He's got his little briefcase. He passed the bill in the his house, you know. He's like all happy. And all of a sudden he went bloop and he dropped down into this room. Because I knew he was going to see 45. I just knew it. Because 45 will crash the economy to get everybody back or because that's who he is and so he could win. But even if he can't win, he's still going to wreck it for everybody else. And but so... I saw him drop, Kevin McC he dropped into this room. Like he's just walking along. He's got his little hat and his suit. He's like all happy. Poop. He dropped into this room. And I forgot to tell you this part when we were chatting earlier. But all of a sudden he was somewhere else. Oh, and there was somebody else talking to him. And there somebody else was going, mm -mm, you are not going to do this. I don't know who that was. I don't even know if it's an American. I kind of don't really think so because this affects the world if yeah. they you know if they do that but i saw him like no so i feel like he's not going to uh and i, I think is that you know what were you getting on this do you did you see yeah, that he was I mean, gonna crash and burn or throw it in the trash no but i but i do think that we're gonna get we could possibly get kind of to the 12th hour the 11th hour and that's mm -hmm. enough, you know, that's a lot of stress and, and it will affect the stock market because the stock market doesn't like that kind of uncertainty. So I do yeah. think that we could potentially get much closer to a default than we need to because of what you're saying. I think it's brilliant. I think it's true that behind all this is Trump pulling the strings because he wants, he wants us to fail so that it looks bad on Biden. I mean, these people still think, like, if you were asked me, does Matt Gates think he's going to get away with everything? And when I went into his energy, I was like, you know what? He does. He kind of does. They really <laughs> do. They've never paid a price before. Yeah. So, but I don't see it crashing. I do see it, it affecting the economy because it, it we shouldn't get that close. It, it should already be done. We These are bills that we incurred already under Trump's watch, and we should pay our bills. Um, and I think yeah. everybody saw, uh, Biden or everybody, it seems like saw Biden last night or yeah, last night in the, um, in the roast, the, uh, journalist. That was uh, amazing. And, and I love that the, when he gave over, when he gave the podium over to the MC and he said, I don't, I won't, you know, I'll be okay with your jokes, but he put his aviators on, he said, but dark Brandon may not, you know? He owned Dark Brandon right there in front of everybody. Um, I just, I just think the Democrats have found their cojones, and now they're going to start acting like it. Yay! So, yeah. So we, yeah, Biden was amazing last night, and 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 I thought that that um, I forgot what his name is, the guy that did the the host today. Roy Woody. Roy yeah. Wood. He was Roy Wood. Was great too. He was great. Um, so uh, let's take a few more questions here. Let's see. I saw some really good ones go flying by. And um, well, let's take a look. This is Beto O'Rourke. I don't know if you remember him, Sybil. He was the guy who it ran for Texas governor. I and, love him. I wanted him to win the first time. And then I saw my guide show me that he went down the river. I'm like, what? <laughs> and then he dropped out. And then I was hoping, and I know that there was a lawsuit. Somebody was suing him for some campaign ad just to kind of mess with him. He, it's frustrating. I love him. Yeah. It's frustrating living in Texas. I, I did a lot of work for him, gave him money, did, supported him where I could. He's such a good guy. Um, it's frustrating because this is like his third, maybe his third um, race that he's lost. And I, I personally have always seen him, seen him as a senator, um, and he lost to Cruz, which was terrible, and then he ran for governor, and he lost. So, you know, it's hard. When you keep losing, it's hard to overcome that kind of energy, that losing energy. So where, where do you see him now? Do you feel like he'll run in Texas, or do you think he'll maybe take a position in the administration or something else? I see a bright future for him. I He really wants to serve and help people. He has such a good heart. And 
sometimes I was afraid he was too sensitive or too too good because you have to have a little ego, a little fight in you. And I just and he did. He stood up when that shooting happened in Uvalde to the governor. So he did, and he was you know marching with people after that shooting in Walmart. I just love him. But I see a bright future. I see him sitting now like he's not getting washed down the river. When, uh, uh, he's sitting beside a river. Uh, there's water going by. And I feel like he's kind of just reflecting on it all. And he's chewing on a piece of wheat or hay. He's got a piece of wheat or hay. That's kind of like abundance. But it's it's like he's thinking about, he's he's very reflective. I feel like he's reflecting um, on what's next. Um, but I do feel like he'll have, I see him, I see him working and felt, feels kind of like a senator. I see him in government in, probably in Washington. I feel like he'll go there and do yeah. something important, do yeah. a bunch of import, a bunch of, there's a bunch of important things. <laughs> yes. I uh, agree. I that, agree. I thanks, guys. Go, That's uh, yeah. Okay. He could go to the administration. I I think, and I I sense that, you know, he. I really wanted him to do that anyway, because uh, it's not really that safe for him here in Texas, and and it's not safe for his kids. So I think he might be. I feel like calmer heads, cooler heads are talking to him. Look, you can do a lot for Texas. If you jump into the administration, you can do a you you can have a much better chance of coming back and helping Texas, right? If you just stay active. And I feel like his kids would do better in Washington than they are in Texas. I just feel like his whole family has been through hell and back. And I hope he listens because they're trying to get him to go into the into the administration for uh, Biden. Oh, okay. That's what I saw like a year or two ago. Me I don't too. know if I was talking to you or who I was talking to, but I did see him going, being a senator, going into administration. But I feel like in Texas, he has money problems and it's yeah. just hard. It's, it's just hard. a struggle and a push. Yeah. And he's tired. I mean, he he's the kind of guy that went from house to house, city yeah. to city. Texas is a big state. And now he, you can't knock on somebody's door. Yeah, exactly. But he he went to every little city. I mean, he really, really campaigned. Um, so I I think he's going to be fine, you guys. And I I he has free will around this choice. I'm not sure if he's going to choose to go into the admin, but it would be great for Biden's admin. It'd be great for him. Uh, so I hope he does. He wants um, to work. He wants to be of service. Wants, and I see him wearing a suit. Whereas mm -hmm. now I see him just kind of yes. sitting and reflecting. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope he takes the summer off. The guy needs a break. He really worked, worked like a dog. Honestly, he really did. Um, so I hope, and, and I feel like uh, there could be some changes in the Biden administration, you know, usually around the two year mark, you know, you do a, you do a, a staff change to kind of freshen things up. And so Biden could be changing up some staff and easily bring in um, Beto. Okay, here's an interesting question from Cheryl McNutt. Does Trump employ psychics to warn him of what's coming? Do they guide him to keep him out of trouble? Now, Cheryl, honestly, just, just looking at what Trump does, he's obviously not listening to them. <laughs> if he's using them, or he's he's got psychics that are yes people, just like all the other people that he hires, right? They just tell him what he wants to hear. The emperor has no clothes. Yeah, I don't see the psychics. Now, I know that the head of Russia, for entertainment purposes, he's got dark energy. They employ in some, you know, uh, they... <laughs> A lot of, um, my grandfather used to be involved and I don't know a lot about it, um, in, uh, secret societies. They use ceremony. Uh -huh. yeah. They don't tell anybody that everyone else, you're just on your own or go to church or something, but they use Sarah. They know the power of ceremony and ritual and connecting with energy or source creator, you know, and all that, or whatever they connect with. They can connect on the dark side, but I don't see Trump. I mean, I'm sorry. I think he's too stupid. 
He is. He's too much in his ego. He thinks he had. He thinks he is, is the grand poobah. He's yeah. got this weird karmic energy where he gets people like, and that's the only reason he's still there is because he's got these people um, fooled. I was like, are they really that dark and evil and hateful? I think they're um, uh, like uh, brainwashed. Yeah, they're brainwashed. He's and and or he's some got of them lot. are evil and hateful and prejudiced. Some of them are, and he picks those all those guys up too because they're like, yeah, there's our guy. Um, but a lot of them are just only watching, you know, their 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 podcast or their they don't listen to anybody. They're brainwashed. They're brainwashed. But I think he's too stupid to use a psychic. So I'm sorry. <laughs> And don't you think there's You're a right, lot of he wouldn't listen. what there's a lot of dirt that that also, you know, you see Lindsey Graham say Trump is a blah, 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 terrible person. And then the next day, Trump is the best person. You see, uh, you know, uh, what's his name? McConnell. Trump is a terrible person. The next day, terrible is a great person. He's a, he's a great person that he has dirt on them. And whenever they oh. wiggle out, he goes, remember the dirt that I have? And then they get right back in line. You know, so he oh. has this amazing uh, compromat, which is Russian dirt um, machine on all these people. But you know who has something on him? <laughs> who? Pence. Pence. Nice. Notice yes, how I agree. he says everything awful about DeSantis, but he won't say anything. A you, he was. <laughs> He's like, oh, well, he deserves to be killed or whatever. And the right. But then once this case came up, and, and they're asking Pence to testify and he's trying to get him stopping the testifying to have, you know, they, 45 doesn't want Pence to test because Pence knows what happened. Yeah. And uh, notice he hasn't said, and he's even said a couple nice things he's about even Pence. Said some nice like, things. what? What is that? Yes. Oh yeah. That's why, because yeah. uh, Dua, he's going to spill the, and I think he did. Pence is not going to go to prison for, no. for 40. He's not going to commit perjury. Nope in front of a grand jury. He's yep. not, he's not stupid. He's not, he's stupid. not, he's not, I mean, he might be, you know, mistaken, but he's not that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> For I, agree. Purposes only. I agree. Yes. Thank you. I agree. So Cindy P wants to know, will the rich ever be made to pay their fair share? Um, I mean, <laughs> that's a big ask, but I, I would say if we could just go back to say even Reagan, which was, honestly, in my opinion, the devil incarnate. But anyway, even if we could just go back to Reagan, the taxes were so much higher on billionaires and millionaires at that time. I think, yes, we're going to make headway. We're going to tax them more. But my God, if we could go back to the 50s when they were taxed at almost 50%, um, I don't see that happening. But I do. I don't see them paying their fair share, I guess is what I'm saying. But I do see more taxes. How about you? Do you see the rich paying more taxes? Yes. Yes. Um, when the uh, Democrats, if, if we definitely, if we uh, win the White House, which I think we will, and then uh, take back the Congress, keep that. Yeah, definitely. I definitely see. I actually pulled a card. I'm like, yes. Nice. And they might have to. Yeah. I, I don't know when that's going to happen, but I mean, it's, it's, it's so obvious. It's so, yeah. Well, um, we have to, because Biden's Security, already talked about it. What? We, we have to, because social security is not viable. You know what I mean? We, we need this money to run our country and take care of our debt. So I, I see that. And, and also the other thing actually civil is the energy of the people. The people are like, I see them with the pitchforks. You know, I, I see them saying, we want more equality. We want you to pay, you know, why am I getting taxed and I'm not on social security, but why are, why are people on social security paying taxes on their social security? It's like, they just stick it to the little person over and over again. And these billionaires aren't paying any taxes. So I think the people are done. They're literally done. And I think they're going to push they're going to push this even further than they think they are. Like, I think we're going to go even further past 
whatever the middle is. So it's like the pendulum they're showing me, right? The pendulum sometimes has to swing yeah. all the way the other way. If it's been way over here, the energy of it is going to swing it way far to the left. So we can yeah. actually have quite a big uh, swing to the left. Yeah. Before it's over. The, the light is coming back and I do see, definitely. I see everybody has to pay their share, fair share. There's no, no free rides for billionaires. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's, it's almost like ridiculous. It's just, yeah. And, and Biden's talked about that. It's just that he can't get that through the Congress right now. I don't know if he can do it. Maybe Truman, could you help him do an executive order? <laughs> yeah, we were talking about this. This is kind of weird, but Truman uh, came to me a couple, about a week ago uh, when I was talking to a friend who's psychic. And then when I get on this call, this Zoom with um, Sybil and she's like, yeah, Truman came to me and I'm like, wow, that's crazy, right? That So obviously, and you see Truman around Biden and you I see some similarities with Truman and Biden and you think that Truman may be kind of helping Biden. Yeah, he was helping him. So a deceased person can influence you. They're not like a guide or an ascended master and a guardian who has who cannot interfere in your free will. Deceased people can have an agenda and they'll whisper in your ear. And so Truman is, I see Truman around him. Actually, um, one of my people asked me to, to channel him and I was like, I don't know anything about him. So I, I, I did a little research and then he came right through and I'm like, oh my God, he's around Truman. And usually we connect with people who are, we have similarities. They both came from very humble, poor beginnings. And um, he also has suffered. Biden's lost his, his, his wife and then his son. He had, Truman had a, a, a major illness. He really, you know, just couldn't seem to make it in his life. And then um, uh, so there was something, oh, he was in active combat in war. So he had some difficult things, but sometimes when people go through difficult things, it, it kind of, it helps them grow or it opens their heart. It gives them courage to do the right thing because they come they, because of what they've been through. And so they both have that in common. And then for some reason he got lucky, he got helped. Now Truman was helped kind of by a guy who was a little more crooked. Obama helped Biden. I mean, just step, he was already in there though, but he just stepped him up right in there. Obama, who was amazing. Uh, force of light. Anyway, so he, he, I see him around Biden and I see him, um, you know, influencing, like, do the more executive, like, don't be, just do this. We need to do these orders. And then I saw I passed an executive order to help uh, with child care, uh, helping to pay for child care a couple days ago. So I'm like, okay, I think he did some other executive orders before that. Um, I know he's done some of, uh, I don't know how many he's done while he's been in office. But then the other thing that I saw in common with them is that Truman became president because the president stepped down or the president died and a reverse situation. If anything were ever to happen, and I'm not saying it is, but if anything, if for whatever reason, Biden never stepped down and Kamala Harris stepped in. So there's a lot of similar, you know, a little bit different, but similar. They're both presidents. Um, and so I see him around. That was really interesting to, that the energy, how different people are tapping into the energy. And we had no connection with this before, but it just came up. Yeah. So you guys can tune in and see what you get as far as Truman and Biden. Because I think that um, Truman really wants to be, he's very active. I'll just say that he's very active. Um, and I think that you guys can, I, I mean, also when I go into his energy, he doesn't care. He's not trying to hide. He's not hiding behind the dumpster, you know, like MTG and McCarthy were <laughs> in Sybil's uh, vision. Truman is like, he's really bold. He's, he's very clear what he stands for. And, and he's happy for anybody to know what he's doing. So I think you guys could all really easily uh, tap into him, to be honest with you. Um, okay. So any other political questions? Let's see. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, um, Kathy wants to know if Texas Republicans cheated in O'Rourke. I mean, in all ways, right? I mean, they do you know that I this is something that shocked me when I after Christmas, there were more drop offs for me to drop off my Christmas tree, my live Christmas tree to get it recycled. than there were polling places back in November. And Texas doesn't even recycle. <laughs> so, you know, they cheated in the sense that they reduced the polling places. They reduced the hours they were available. They threw out ballots. Um, and then I do think, I really do think that there was some shenanigans that went on with some of the boxes, some of the voting machines. Um, and they are being investigated by Jack Smith. So I think that's going to come uh, to the light. What do you get, Sybil? Yeah, it's okay to question, uh, to you know, if an election was fair, we're not having an insurrection and overthrowing the government. <laughs> <laughs> but if there's actual facts yeah. and evidence, that's yeah. different. You know, they never found anything with 45. They're just, you know, no one could ever, yeah, and they lost in court. It's okay to question the legitimacy or take it to court or if you have, you know, actual evidence. So um, that's not wrong. But I feel like something shady, I see a bunch of crap. I don't know what it is. It's all dark. <laughs> it looks like a bunch of... Like a septic tank? <laughs> Some It could be. <laughs> it, it just looks very dark, and I see Beta re looking at it, and it's like it's it's way more of that than there is of his good energy that could come in. And so I, I think maybe even... And every, to me, everybody's psychic on some level. We don't realize it, but we all have thoughts and feelings. And he's very tuned in and, and intelligent. So I feel like he knows something happened. Oh, nice. But yeah. maybe he's he can't say that because yes. he doesn't have, he yes. doesn't know what it is. Um, but I saw um, in the... Um, presidential election when I, I mean, I live out in Cal Northern California and I was driving around in the neighborhood and there were Beto O'Rourke signs up. <laughs> nice. I live in a very liberal area. Once in a while you see a Trump sign, but mostly uh, they're Democrats area. And we had Beto and I just immediately saw him. I'm like, Oh my God, I love him. And then I saw, I just, I want him to win. And then I saw um, like he was going to be go down the river. I'm like, what? No, me what too. That? Me too. I almost and then cried shortly on the video after he quit that. that. But I do feel like, and then then some guy was suing him. Um, yeah. I guess from this last election, some millionaire because he said something which is ridiculous. That's so ridiculous. I feel like that's they're trying to just, you know, take. Um, was there cheating? I'll say, uh, yeah, I'll, everything you said. Yeah. <laughs> And I love that you said, and I don't know why I never picked this up, but he is. He's an empath. Beto O'Rourke is an empath. It's clear as day. It's like lights in Vegas. Now that I'm looking, I see it, but I never saw it before because he seems so cerebral and sort of on point and on message and passionate. I didn't see that empathic side of him, but he's very empathic. Yeah. Well, these people, it, it's, some of these people feel like they're, I mean, they, they may, we may, may not remember our purpose, but we feel driven to do it like Jack Smith. Yeah. Like right. he was, that's his purpose to come in here and, and, and rescue and help people and help the earth. Beto O'Rourke has a purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, Martin Luther King had a purpose. And when you listen to them talk, sometimes I can see like this otherworldly or higher vibration coming through. I'm like, wait a minute. Just like when I saw those Jones, you know, like those Jones uh, that got. Um, oh yeah. Justin out of Tennessee. Justin's. Yeah. Uh -huh. The Jones, the, 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 the Their first names are both Justin. Yeah. Yeah. That Justin was Jones. And I can't remember the other, but it, the Tennessee three. Yeah. But when that one, he's the, well, the one, yeah, they both are amazing, but when I, the one in the white, when he was talking, I was like, wait a minute, there's some, both of them, with both of them, there's something higher coming yes. through. Yes, here. I agree. That I is, agree. is, is meant to, they are right on purpose 
of yes. being what they are here to do. And that's what I feel with Beto O'Rourke. He has like this yeah. higher, that's why I don't feel like he's just going to go, oh, okay, I'll just stay home and weed the <laughs> garden or something. I don't know. <laughs> he might be sitting around, you know, reflecting. He feels reflective. Yeah. yeah. I feel like he, stuff affects him. Like you were saying, yeah. Zelensky. I yeah. saw one of you. Zelensky is affected, but he's yeah. become really brave and hard. Okay. So we're, we'll. Well, did Republicans? Oh, yeah. 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 They tweeted. yeah. So let me throw up another uh, question over here. Um, I don't know what to say about this. Kathy Reagan says that uh, will the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Bader Ginsburg, uh, be guiding Biden and appointing justices? I mean, I think yes, but I see another justice and I don't know who it is. It's obviously somebody who's crossed over. Um, and it, it's a, it's a man and it's, uh, somebody who's kind of big, like when he wears his robes, like he's either barrel chested or something. Anyway, Biden definitely has, you know what? Biden is not even going to ask these justices. You know what? Biden swear to God, Biden wants to ask Dr. Martin Luther King. Biden is like, I need to ask somebody who went through the struggle, who can help me because we're going through a time, it's it's unprecedented except for maybe the 1960s civil rights movement. So I feel like Biden is actually leaning on these civil rights movements, uh, getting chills, uh, leaders to help him with the Supreme Court. Because I, what does that tell you? It tells you that these cases are gonna end up in front of the Supreme Court. You know, within, within a year, two years, three years, we're going to have a lot of these cases go back before the Supreme Court. And he wants to make sure that those people in the Supreme Court really understand the struggle, really get it, you know, that aren't such so scholarly that this is all sort of like a chess game that isn't real. He wants people who really feel real about it. Going back to Truman, like Sybil said, Truman was a real person. He wasn't some you know, a uh, boarding school rich kid who never experienced adversity, right? So I think that's interesting. What do you get with that? Well, I when I tune into Ruth G Bader Ginsburg, I see her behind the Supreme Court who's ever doing some stuff and she comes up from behind them and she goes and she's pushing them like, look at this, look at this. Like she you know might she be helping be. getting some of this information out there and drawing attention to like, it's like they might, they don't actually feel like they're being pushed. Well, in one case, they might go look behind them. What? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> but I feel like that's what she's doing um, um, empathically, like getting people to look at, like, look at what's really going on there. And so then you have reporters or other people, you know, get yes. coming, like, I mean, yeah. that's how, everything is, is energy first. It's an idea. It's a thought. And she can implant, like I was saying with deceased people, they can uh, whisper thoughts in your head. <laughs> so I'd be careful who you hang around with, even in the spirit world. <laughs> but she she's a good one. I like, Jack Smith. You know, she's she talking some trouble and she's going to trip. She told me, I'm going to put my foot out and trip him up. She's a feisty little thing. <laughs> He's feisty. For entertainment purposes only. Like, no. She like, totally would, would you trip up. him up. She <laughs> would. She totally would. So, you know, I wonder, and I agree, Sister of Six, uh, Justice Thurgood, Thurgood Marshall was exactly who I was seeing. Thank you guys who suggested that that's who I was seeing. That's who I was seeing. Um, so isn't it, is it, do I have it wrong, viewers? You guys are so much sharper. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah, I see him too. Isn't, um, it, it wasn't Justice Roberts kind of a good friend or was it Kavanaugh? R, RBG was really good friends with one of those two, Kavanaugh or Roberts, which always surprised me. I was always like, what? You know, but I think it's like, it. so the guides are showing me, do you guys remember when Michelle Obama sat next to George W. Bush? Right? There's that saying of keep your enemies closer. You know what I mean? So I think, 
Michelle Obama really re reached out to George W. Bush to see him as a human, to find out what really makes him tick and to un kind of take that persona off. And I wonder if RBG did the same thing with Kavanaugh or Roberts, but I'm wondering what she thinks of them right now. That's what I want to know. It was Alito? You guys are all Robert. Telling me, you're telling me Alito? Uh, Sky, Scalia, Alito, you're telling me everybody. Uh, she was mentoring Kavanaugh. I knew that. Um, oh, oh, Scalia, they were opera lovers. Okay. Okay, Scalia. Okay. You know what it reminds me of? is like, you know, your conservative, creepy uncle or grandfather. You still want to be respectful. <laughs> And, oh you know, God. not cause a family problem. So you, you go out of your way with, to be kind and respectful, put aside the family, like some family members, I don't even discuss politics. Let's just have a nice lunch. So you could still have a relationship. Yeah. Okay. A lot of families break up, they get terrible fights and uh, yeah. But I feel like she did that out of the goodness of her heart to put stuff aside and for the good of the people, you know, that we can get, we can find a way, things that we have in common. Right. Know. So what do you think RBG thinks of Roberts? Being Chief <laughs> Justice. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> That's I hilarious. think she thought he was better before. And she's like coming up behind him going, come on, come on, come on. What are you doing? Come on. What are you doing? Come on. What are you doing? And then she took his collar and she went snap. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> oh she's God. a little feisty. Yeah, she is feisty. Especially on the other side. Cause you don't have to answer to anybody over there. I mean, it's not, it's not. <laughs> oh my God. But she's like, come on, come on. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, oh. Come on, come on, come on. He's not listening to her. He's like, get away. And he doesn't know she's there, you know, consciously. He's not going to. But um, <laughs> that's yeah, hilarious. She, she's a little uh, snap a little his under a wedgie. Oh, that's a little hilarious. Ticked off. A wedgie? No, Cindy P said snap his underwear and give him a wedgie. I think that's what she would do to Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh is the one that deserves the wedgie. Um, uh -huh. with you. Um, yeah, I agree, Fred. Us Roberts is Roberts is compromised. He's a terrible chief. He's his court has gone rogue. Nobody is in control of the court. The court is um, not trustworthy. The American people have no um, no respect for it. Um, I don't I don't know that much of anybody has any respect for it. Um, okay, so let's see. He has J C Penny double wide underwear, um, a la Linda G. Um, so Joe, I, I don't know. I mean, who knows, right? Did RB, RBG have anything to do with Moscow Mitch's little pratfall? Uh, so, you know, Mitch fell. Um, I mean, she's pesky, but I don't think she really would hurt somebody. No, I don't think she's physically causing harm. That's really a dark energy that she's just like poking people and yeah. trying to get a message, like talking to them, but it's not, you, you wouldn't, knock somebody you know he's a he's an older he could have you know he could have you know put somebody in the hospital no yeah no i don't see her doing that yeah she's just popping his collar and probably flicking him like this you know like yeah how many of you guys have felt somebody playing with your hair because i have right or felt something you know like on your back or something that for him that's rb rbg um yeah, McConnell is really old. Um, so, yeah, I I don't see. How do you see McConnell? Everybody knows if you've been watching me that that McConnell stumps me uh, because he doesn't he doesn't um, follow the energy, right? Like, so I always tell you guys, if any of us was walking against uh, along an open field and then a thunderstorm came up and it was lightning, like lightning bolts we would hit the deck and crawl to shelter, right? I mean, we would take care to get out of that energy. And that's kind of what you do as a psychic. Some of it is you're just reading the energy around someone. They hate their job. They hate their job. They hate their job. They're probably going to quit or they're probably going to get fired because they hate their job. 
But McConnell doesn't care about energy. He's like, strike me. Go ahead. I don't care. So he does not react to energy the way every other human does. And so timing is really hard for him because he just doesn't care. He just doesn't care what the energy does. He's already said that, you know, he doesn't care if he's lied. He doesn't care if he's a liar. He, you know, I mean, really, he has no respect for himself anymore. Yeah, I mean, it could be just that he's that he's evil and he doesn't care. And I, I don't know. Um, but how do you see that, Sybil? Do you see him coming back? I mean, he's back, but do you see him staying through the end of the year as a senator? Can you tune into that? Well, I've heard some people, and I don't like calling names, but I thought it was interesting, call him Turtle Man and making fun. And I'm not doing that because I that's not my purpose. But... <laughs> I, I thought it was interesting because it's almost like he could go inside of a shell. That's true. And he's still there and nothing phases him. I'm like, what? That's and true. Just, that, I mean, like, that's true. There's something to that. And um, I also see him like with some kind of Roman, like uh, toga or leaves, those leaves oh, they used to wear in the hair. Oh. I don't know that some other lifetime... So it feels like he's just, um, it's almost like I'm just playing a role in a play or my role here. It's almost like, almost like he's not really, <laughs> I think he is human, but he's kind of programmed. And I know that he was connected to dark money in the federal society, putting all these judges in there. That's why they got him in there. And he did that. But as far as when 45 came and started doing all that stuff, he didn't want a lot to do with that. And so basically, and I still see it now, I see it feel like he's crying, but he never shows it on the outside. He's, oh, oh, oh you like this? Oh, because 45 attacked him and, and then he fell. And yeah. But even before that, I just felt like, you know, not a fun uh, person, not a fun job. But it's, it's, it's so, so weird. He just kind of does what he's told and follows the, you know, the agreement to get these judges in. And um, kind of creepy because he doesn't really care about people or anything. It's weird. I don't you know. Yeah, it's almost like, I almost feel like he's a character or a prop in a play or something. It's weird. Well, maybe he's a puppet and, and he's, you yeah. know, got the puppet masters telling him what to do and when to do it. And that's why he doesn't care because it's not he. Why should he care? Right. It's yeah. It's got in some ways nothing to do with him. Yeah. Um, Ted Williams says he's going to be he's he's back for two years and then he and then his health gets him. I don't know. I feel Ted, like I, he goes like this. Or who said he's who's Ted? Ted uh huh. Who's that? And the viewer, one of the viewers said he's back for two years and then, the, and then his health gets him. So do you feel like well, he'll last? I feel like years? I see him standing there and he just goes, on. I feel like he's going <laughs> to fall again or something okay. will happen with his health. Right. Or right. just eventually he'll just uh, like, will he be reelected? Um, maybe not. I don't know if he'll run. I, I, I feel like, yeah, he doesn't like his job or he doesn't, he doesn't like things. The way. I just, I hear a lot of crying, but it's like his inner self. He may not even be connected with his feelings. He just kind of goes along and does what he's supposed to do. But I, I feel like he, to some extent he he might be, because I just see a lot of crying around him. And then I just feel him like he goes clunk. I don't know when that's going to happen. Yeah. Like either he'll fall again or he'll get sick. But when I look at the race, I feel like he's kind of looking behind him. It like things are not, really good like the old days were better and i feel like in some ways kind of the door already closed on him because the the magas don't was he did he win election last time mm -hmm. cuz once yeah. he spoke out about january 6 and he didn't really back uh 45 i feel like they don't and and, and yeah. trump's always attacking him so he's changed his tune he's changed his tune again to now be not so pro trump uh, so I think that, I think that I, I just don't know if I see him for two more years, but I will be the first to admit that I have been wrong on the timing with that guy. I just don't, I don't know. Um, I feel like, no, 
I I would go more of a no than a yes for a two whole more years. Two whole more years. Like his okay. energy, his mind may want to do this, but I just don't think his health. I just no, don't. I think feel he like he's going to fall again, or something's going to. There's something wrong. Yeah. yeah, there's something wrong. And and that and you know and it's true. I do think sometimes the dark energy can prop these people up, can give them kind of this sort of life force. And, uh, but that can only go for so long. Um, yeah. Okay. So Cindy P says, who will be first, who will be the first Trump behind bar? So will it be, um, uh, Don Jr., Eric, Ivanka, or daddy? I can't even say that word. I can't believe I said that word. The idea that he is <laughs> absolutely. You're funny. I, I, I wish I could go back in time. Okay. I it's always Mercury say 45. We'll give you, we'll give you. I don't know what happened. I don't know how that happened, but 45. Okay. 45. So, uh, okay. That was rough. Okay. Sorry. Who's going to be, so I don't see Trump behind bars. I see him in a straight jacket or in a padded room or in a, I see him sequestered. He's an ex-president. You guys, he's just not going to be, I just don't see us putting him, in, putting him in Rikers where he can crime those prisoners crime from their cells. Imagine the damage this guy could do in Rikers. <laughs> so he really needs to be in like under house arrest, but let's say behind bars for the kids or house arrest or whatever for Trump. Who, who do we see first? Um, I feel like it might be more like Jared. Jared looks bad. And then I would say Don. Don Jr.? Yeah. Or Don Sr.? Don Jr. I don't see a 45 in jail either. I feel like I feel like in the cuckoo house somewhere, home, walking locked around up. a golf course. I don't know. Yeah, locked up. He's going to be locked up because he can't. He, the other thing is he cannot talk to people. He cannot even see his kids. Um, and I mean cavity searches. I know I shouldn't have said that, but I'm saying that his kids need to go in to, and they're not going to visit him. They're not going to visit him. He's not going to have any visitors. And anybody that would want to visit him, like Roger Stone, uh, if he if he's not in jail, um, it, you can't allow Trump to have that kind of access because he will he will continue to crime. He will continue to pass notes, to pass things, to get things. I mean, he has to really be completely sequestered. Um, but you see, you see Jared, do you, I think feel like Jared Jared's is in more legal trouble because Jared, um, took that money from the Saudis or whatever. And he was involved, might be involved with the document stuff that are secrets and things like that. So I don't know that he's going to end up in prison. These guys might, I, I think, uh, Don Jr. may leave the country and try to do business elsewhere. I'm like, I don't know what they're going to lock up. I don't really feel like, I feel like he did a bunch of shady stuff. But um, I feel like Jared's done worse, right? Probably so. But Jared, isn't Jared a, a citizen also of Israel? Doesn't he have a uh, dual citizenship? So he could easily um, kind of jet. I think in a sense, um, you know, I was also getting Eric in some ways, Eric, Eric, God bless him. Maybe is maybe the dumb one. And I think that he was, I can see him just holding the bag. Like, uh, yeah. you know what I mean? His siblings yeah. like, I feel like off, he's got like, something. Eric, yeah. hold this. And he's like, okay. You know? Yeah. Um, that's too bad. Ivanka already uh, turned on them. She did in the January 6th. Uh, I think that I, I believe Bill Barr. She, she's. I feel like she, like I feel like she might turn on Jared or whoever her her Ivanka dad. Ivanka is going to turn on everybody. Right. She's going to turn on everybody because she has to. Did that? You know, the, they show me the feds like putting one in one room, one in another room, and then saying to this one, you know, Ivanka said 
And he's like, really? Well, I'll say this about her. And then they go over there and they're like, uh -huh. Don said, and, and because they're separated, they don't know they're being played against each other. So they just end up really ratting each other out. I don't think there's a lot of love in that family. I don't think there's a lot of loyalty. No, it's a snake pit. It's, it's terrible. Everybody's fighting against each other, but I feel like they should go to jail. I'm, this is what I'm getting from my guys, but I don't know that they are. Are you feeling that yeah. someone goes to jail? Are they going to try to skip town or fight it, get a lesser sentence? Whatever? I honestly think it's going to end up being more civil. I think it's going to be more civil charges. I huh. think tr the rest of Trump's company, whatever is left of it, is going to be completely just decimated. And I've always seen the two boys going to one of the stand, like Tajikistan, you know, Tajikistan or one of the stand countries um, uh -huh. where it's the wild west. And with, you know, maybe a million dollars, you can actually build a big hotel. You know what I mean? The, 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 the money goes further and you can pay people off because it's the wild west kind of area. So I feel like they go there. And, and then yeah. I think Russia is going to be kind of flatlining. And I think that's going to help those countries kind of, kind of grow and uh, kind of get outside of that shadow. So that's kind of where I see the boys going. Um, but I, Ivanka is not completely clear. She's, she's Ooh. trying to clean up her, you know, whitewash her little issues, but yeah. she's not really in the clear. I don't see her being in the clear. Um, yeah, but she'll turn. She'll talk. She'll give up information. She'll I think do she's already done it. I think she's yeah. already done it. She's and already I, done I, it or yeah. I feel like she'll even turn on her husband. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I think she'll turn on everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So pretty interesting. Um, um, <laughs> do I see Ivanka? Uh, do we see Ivanka becoming a Saudi princess? You know, I'm laughing, but Terry, there's energy around what you're what you're asking. There's actually energy in that. Um, my understanding from my my um, spirit guides, but I feel like I also have this information from some other source, is that uh, Ivanka and Jared are in an open relationship, and that's that that's it's it's acknowledged that they're okay with that. Um, so I don't know that I see her. I don't know that I see their relationship surviving this. So they could become divorced and I could see, I really could. You're right, Terry. I could see her becoming a, a Saudi uh, princess of some sort. Right. Do you get that? I see. I just kind of, oh, I'm feeling like a bunch of sexual energy and I'm like, yeah, I don't want to, <laughs> <laughs> when I look at that, I'm like, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I'll say a yes to that. I mean, that's a definite possibility. Is it written in stone? Maybe not yet, but I feel like their marriage is um, not good. It was convenient and everything was working until it's not, you know, to me, yeah. which isn't what a marriage is, but um, it worked for them then. And then however they set it up and yeah, it doesn't feel, uh, it feel, it feels more like her. He feels like he's like, uh, maybe a germaphobe or really picky or afraid of people or thinks everybody's a spy or something. So I feel like he's going to be really careful where she's maybe a little more, um, open to somebody with money. She'll go for that. That'll work. <laughs> Yes. And more power, right? Jared, Jared had the, had some money, but he didn't really have the power. Remember Jared's father did, did prison time. Um, so Jared yeah. doesn't come from like this, you know, Royal or, or wealthy, wealthy, wealthy family. Um, so I think she wants to trade up. Absolutely. I think that's a great question. I'm glad you, you asked that Terry. Yeah. Uh, and once somebody has that in their family energy, it's like they have that they have a propensity or it's, it's like certain things run in families. Yeah. To me, they're energies. People can say it, it could be genes or, you know, but, but yeah, he's already got like, 
he was already planning to be crooked before he was crooked. So, so I don't know. <laughs> it's true. He used to visit his dad in prison. So oh. he already he already knows what this, you know, knows how the game down, right? Like he's familiar with that kind of situation. Yeah. Um here's another question. Um so will any of the coming Trump scandals affect the timing or protocols? of any coming elections? That's such a good question. Like, G, uh, I, I want to back up a minute. I just had something coming through that I, I feel like this whole 45 and it's probably obvious. So I don't even know if I need to say it, but I'll just be really brief. It, I feel like a lot of these shootings and the hate and everything, I feel like 45 just put this really ugly energy out there for men to be like, Oh, I can be a cheater. I can have an open marriage or women too, like whatever, we can all do this with like helping us subscribe to our worst tendencies. That's true. That's true. And That's I just wanted to say that about that. I'm not promoting like, yay, that looks fun. When I was feeling that energy, it felt like really creepy to me. I'm like, I don't like that. If that is, you know, and it's sad. I love to see like Jimmy Carter or even Biden who are married for years yeah. and honor and respect. And the family is, that's how we have a strong society. And I'm not trying to be religious or have a judgment view. You, you know, I don't, I've been divorced three times, so I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I just love that when people put those values out, because I feel like a lot of our young people are going to help us move forward and change the world. But I also feel like they're so damaged and the stuff that the, we, they see on the internet and from this 45 and everything is just, ugly and hateful and it's really sad and scary to see that as i just wanted to say that my little lecture right. on morality it, it's like he's given them license you know what i mean he's given them license to have the rage and you know what i mean he says it's okay to be mad at these people these people have taken something from you right so he he really does give them the license yeah or be against it. women or say you can grab them by the whatever and think he can do whatever he wants right. and right and that's that's you know and then he's not the evangelicals oh I'm like he's not even faithful to his wife he even admits you know i mean i don't understand how they uh, anyway it's weird okay all right so what's the question okay and I don't think, and I don't think Sybil is saying that married, she's not prescribing that heterosexual is the only married couple. You're just saying um, stability and love in whatever, you know, whatever connection is for you, that's the, the best connection. No, yeah, there's nothing wrong with um, being bisexual or trans. It's, we should... I, I would hope that we help people to be who they are and thrive and grow and evolve and enjoy their life by teaching them who they are, not forcing them to be who they're not. And that's a whole nother thing that's really sad that that 45 brought this whole ugly ugliness that's going on. Yeah. It's just, uh, I just wanted to say something about, because since we were talking about uh, their marriage and I just, anyway. Right. Okay. And so, um, okay. So the question is, will any of the coming Trump scandals affect the timing or the protocols of the upcoming elections? Like uh, the GOP candidates having to drop out before or just after election results, basically just chaos. That's such a great question, Joe. It goes down to timing. What I see is I feel like, you know, Jack Smith, Tish James, Alvin Bragg, Fonnie Willis, all of those people understand that we have a timetable that they need to bring charges against who they're going to bring charges against in, in enough time that we can have those court cases and hopefully get those things finished at least four months, five months before the election. So I, I don't see it coming up against the election. Um, I think what you're reading, and I think you're right, I think you're reading that the chaos is what they want, and that's what the Republicans want. So they would want to delay, 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 and have these court cases happening right around the time of the election, as if that's going to help them. But I see 
these judges are, you can see it in the E. Jean Carroll case. You can see these judges, like it's like a switch went off and they're like, no, we're going to be in court tomorrow at 8 a.m. One of the judges, remember, made them work at night and said, you got to get this to me by midnight. The judges are done. So I feel like the, the timeline that I've seen, and I have pretty confident in it, is that all these people, be they Jack Smith or Tish James or whoever they are, are going to start hitting indictment, indictment, indictment all summer long. We're going to have court cases in the fall. Those court cases are going to be wrapped up by January, February, I think. And I'll love to hear what Sybil has to say. I feel like at least three Congress people, if not more, are going to be indicted and they're going to leave Congress. They're, they're going to step down. They're either going to A, be removed if they don't step down, because eventually if you're convicted, you have to leave Congress. You can stay in Congress if you're indicted. Crazy, I know, but true. Um, but I see this, oh, the chaos happening earlier in the year, like around March, April, we're having special elections. And then that's when I see Congress going, holy, holy moly, they really did arrest these people. They're gonna, they're serious. They could be coming after me next. I'm gonna mind my P's and Q's. I'm gonna go over here and act nice and hold the Democrats' hand and sing Kumbaya. That's what I see. What do you see? <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like that's partly why they're fighting so hard to, you know, like, oh my God, going up to, and look at who's fighting so hard, Jim Jordan and MTG. Um, these are people who I saw, um, MTG in serious trouble, like in serious trouble, uh, like not doing good. Like, I don't know if she's losing her election or she gets probably taken out. Um, I feel like, and what my guide said is like, live by the sword, die by the sword. Not talking about a physical issue, but uh, metaphorically what she's doing. And so I see her not doing good. I see Jim Jordan struggling. I don't see, I feel like he may be taken out of, of Congress. Yeah. And um, remember in all the chaos, even though it seems like it's chaotic, life is chaotic. And our job is to you know, hold these people accountable, but also in our personal lives to not let it, you know, the chaos and the worry and just see, see the justice happening and know that it's supposed to be, it, it everything is, is happening exactly as it should. It's divinely ordered. And maybe with our human minds, we can't understand that, but I, I definitely feel like, um, that you're right, that the um, Fonnie Willis and, and Jack Smith, they're going to go ahead um, with these investigations. And that, you know, that's what 45 did. While he, one reason why he's running. So I say, oh, it's political. Yeah, right. Because that's what he thought would save him. And he announced not. way early. Yeah. Because he's not. worried. But um, does that end? Have... I know he gave a long roundabout answer, but. Yes. Um, so. They've already had so many secret uh, grand juries, you know, that we yeah. don't even know anything about. And those are the grand juries that, that these prosecutors do to see if they have a case. Now that they have a case, now this is what Fannie Willis, Fannie Willis has been doing. Now she's going to be announcing her case. Now, her case got moved back because with the fake electors, because for a few reasons, but one of the reasons was the fake electors lawyer was fighting, was put, they were, they were fighting the fake electors, her own clients were fighting each other. So Bonnie Willis said, this lawyer needs to be removed from this case. She's not representing her clients. So now those clients have to find new attorneys and those new attorneys have to get back up to speed because you don't want to drag them before a court, a judge and say, we didn't, I just got this case. I can't try this case. Right. So we want to do everything by the book. So that's why, and it's, it's January, I mean, excuse me, it's July and through September that Fonnie's going to be announcing her court case. Do you see, um, do you see Sybil any, when you tune into 2024, the election, the presidential election, and we're going to be having, you know, Senate and House election all at the same time. 
do you see shenanigans? Do you see like uh, problems, chaos? Do you see um, protests, riots, anything? About what? The election. The upcoming election next year. Uh, like if Biden wins, do I see protests or another? Well, just the election itself. When people go to vote, when people go to vote, do you see there being problems? Um, it, it's going to be intense. <laughs> this is an, especially yeah. in some states. It's, it's, you know, um, yeah, especially if we have, uh, 45 and Biden running again. <laughs> Here we go again. I don't think 45 is going to run. I, I don't. don't think, I don't, I don't think okay. I've never seen him running. Okay. Um, I think that he's going to be on ice. They're saying so, uh, now hopefully, I mean, I don't know that that means he's in a morgue on ice. I'm just saying, you know, he's cooling his heels somewhere. He's, he's not in the game and I don't see DeSantis running. Um, yeah, I, I feel like somebody else is going to come up. Somebody else is going to come up. It could I didn't know if it was Chris Christie and, and Pompeo said he wasn't running because he's not going to go against uh, 45. But if 45 is not there, I don't know. 45 if... isn't going to be there. So all those Republicans, you might get rip, uh, Mitt Romney. You might get Chris oh. Christie. You might get some of these moderates come out and say, okay, maybe it's safe for me to run for office. Uh, but I don't, but it's, it's going to be mayhem. The Republican party is going to be in a shambles. Yeah, um, it does look, oh, I see a big crowd and people are like, ah, yeah, it's around a, it's voting. I, I don't know where that is or what, how much of that is yet, but what are you seeing? Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I don't see, I mean, Pence could run, but Pence has no support what? in the Republican party. He has no power. And he has, he has no power, no support. And neither does Liz Cheney right now. She's still sharpening her claws. I mm. think she's going to be coming out, coming, coming, running. She might be running for the Senate again, or she might be doing something else, but I don't see her running for president. Um, do I see Josh Hawley running? <laughs> do you, well, how do you mean that exactly? Running, running for his life <laughs> or, um, or um, jo Josh Hawley is another one who is really in some hot water. He is in some yeah. hot water. Um Kemp. Yeah. Uh, Kemp people are mentioning Kemp. So Kemp has tried to keep his nose clean. You know, he's tried to not be so MAGA, uh, and he's, he's not been so much of a suck up to, to Trump at all. Who's Kemp again? Kemp is the governor. Isn't he the governor of, um, Georgia, Georgia? Oh, well, he's not, Kemp he's not great. Oh, yeah. I know he is. Uh, will he run? Um, I don't think so. I don't know why. No, I mean, a lot, you know, listen, in the beginning, you might have 15 Republicans throw their hat in, right? If it's an open race, like Trump is gone, the dog catcher is going to throw their, their, their hat in the ring. Um, no. but I don't see these people being, uh, particularly, See, John Kasich is, John Kasich would be, he's a moderate and he would be good in a different, this isn't the right atmosphere. I don't think there's enough moderate Kasich, Republicans no. to um, uh, do that. anything. I just, the, the Republican party feels like a ball of fire ants. I don't know if you guys all know what fire ants are, but they bite you, they sting. And when, when it floods, they'll form a ball. And they'll kind of float on the water. That they're like just a ball of stinging ants, but they're not doing anything. They're all stinging each other. I don't see Liz running. Um, I I mean, she might run for Congress. No, she doesn't have a lot of support in Wyoming, y'all. She she you know she's kind of stuck. I don't see her running for president. I I take it back. I feel no. like Kemp might try. But I don't uh -huh. feel like he wins. 
I, I'm I pulling cards now on people. This is a ways away, but it, a lot's going to change. So much is changing. There's so much happening. And so like you're right, there's so much change. happening that we're not seeing. Yeah, so much is going to change. Um, so is it Pompeo? Is he going to change his mind and say he's running? No. I just huh. don't see him. I don't see any. I see Biden winning. I see Biden winning. I, by by the end of next year, all of those great bills, the CHIP Act, all those things that he passed with the Democrats are actually going to, you know, be working and and people are going to be happy. They're going to feel good about it. Uh, his we I just told you guys today that his his popularity rating is way up. I mean, it's gone up to over 50 percent. So that for why? You know what I mean? So. Just imagine next year when he's this, these things are really in action. Oh, Sununu, Sununu of governor. I got a no uh, on him. Okay. I feel like Ron DeSantis is going to make a run. He might, he's, horrible. he might try. Oh I'm sure he's going to try, but he's going to trip over them big old white boots he's wearing. <laughs> uh, is uh, Ron DeSantis going to be the Republican nominee? He, I, well, he might, but then he's going to have some problems. Okay, well, that's good. Well, actually, I got a better. I pulled cards for all these people. I got a better card for Kemp than him, and I didn't think Kemp was looking very good at all. I'm like, damn. I yeah. guess you know I have to be careful. That my personal opinion isn't because I don't like him at all. I'm like, oh, who would vote for him? But some people, I think, like, how did they get in office? Um, who voted them? <laughs> well, that's what it is. They they gerrymandered the district, so they, uh -huh. you know, they don't have to have. That's the other thing that's really upsetting Americans, and this is a worldwide phenomenon, is that the people are not represented. You know, these Republicans yeah. represent a minority. They have they can get less votes and win than Republicans because of these crazy districts. Yeah. So they don't actually represent the majority. I mean, and we see that time and again with abortion, they in, in gun laws, uh, the a majority of Americans want these laws, but these Republicans are steadily voting against it. So you're yeah. so you're gonna have these people that are gonna again be with the fit pitforks. They're gonna be. We want change. We want change. And they're going to get in the streets and they're going to affect change. Yeah, I don't see Mitt Romney has enough um, uh, people, aren't uh, like the MAGA people aren't going to vote for him. No, nope. he no, never they, makes it. He keeps running and he just never, he just doesn't have the support. Yeah. Um, and I don't see Sununu, so. And then there was a, a, a Democrat Kennedy or something, he's not gonna. That's but he's not point. really a Democrat. He's being run by the dark money as a okay. Democrat. Yeah, yeah, he's not gonna. Uh, he's not gonna run. Um, as far as DeSantis, I feel like again, timing is is like at my peril. At my peril, am I gonna tell all you guys the timing? Because I'm gonna, you know, how 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 do I turn energy that has no time into time? Um, but but I do see DeSantis like just running out of gas, like just petering out. Um, he now that he has more of a, you know, when he went, they're telling me, they're reminding me when he just went on this international book tour or whatever. He he didn't get very good reviews. The Europeans thought he was kind of just daft or dumb or you know, it's not he a bore, boring. He got terrible reviews. He now that he's getting out among the states and internationally, now he's finding out that he doesn't have what it takes. Yeah, he just doesn't have that leadership quality. Um, so I think he's going to find out that that he that he doesn't have it. Um, but meanwhile, what I see, and maybe you see this too, Sybil, is, is Trump and DeSantis pulling each other down, right? Like one gets up and the other pulls the pant legs down and then the other one gets up and, Ugh. you know, they're just going to literally ruin each other's lives. So yeah. that's great. Yeah. Well, he's already, he, 45 is already trying to get uh, his base against uh, 
DeSantis. But when I see looked at DeSantis before, I saw him on like a speedboat or a jet ski. Or, it's like a speedboat, and he's flying around in the water in Florida. But when he gets to the shore, that ends. I don't feel like he goes any further than Florida. He can't it, like whatever he's doing. And then he's passed all this anti-LGBT. Um, no black history, busing immigrants around that, you know, is a horrible thing. All he's like, and then against the business and Disney. And so when I look at him, I see the same, who, what was that guy that tried to run for Senate against, uh, Warnock? Um, that guy. Oh yeah. Um, the, the, oh yeah. The, um, the football player was yeah, that, the yeah, that guy. Player? When I um, looked at him, I saw a cardboard cut out of a person and it just fell over. And that's what I look like. Looks like when I look at DeSantis, I see a cardboard cut out and he just goes plop. So it's not, you know, there might be viable. a little bit of show there. And like, look at me, Emma, you know, yeah. it's going to go plop. So this is a, a very intriguing question. Now that Tucker is not <laughs> a cop anymore, <laughs> does, do we see Tucker running? for president or for anything. I mean, he's in Maine. Isn't he in Maine? At least that's where his cabin is. I don't know what his legal address is. Uh, he could run against what's her name in Maine, to be honest. Uh, right. The woman who kind of um, flip flops. Um, yeah. Herschel Walker. Yeah. Um, no. Well, no, so I'm what did you get? No, I got no. No, I saw him. Um, he was doing his talk show and then he fell off the the stool. And then he kind of got up. I feel like he's going to do some other kind of creepy radio or something. Yep, yep, he's going to still right. be spreading his message. But he, he comes from money and I feel like he doesn't want to get into all that mess. Because he couldn't stand it if he lost. He has a huge ego. Right. And... Uh, it just feels like, yeah, I don't want to do, he, I feel like he wants to stay on, on talk radio or do something like yes. that. Yes. Or I something agree. in the media. I don't even, I mean, if he was going to run, I would think, you know, a governor or something like that would be the place he would start because he's not, he's not a retard. He's not crazy. Well, he's might be evil, but he's not, he's not, he's actually kind of smart, which makes him dangerous. Not, He's not, I wouldn't say he's wise. He might be smart or clever. Clever is like a con man. But um, yeah, I just don't, I don't, I don't feel like he wants to get into all that. He thinks he's still, you know, Mr. Hot Pants or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he's still got it. And those, yeah. No, don't go there. I'm, I'm just warning you. Don't go there. It, it won't be pretty. Um, Yes, I agree with everything you said. He he's gonna he's gonna think about his wallet. He's gonna go create his own little dynasty, whatever that is, his own media company. I think he already has one, but now he's free to really all that money that he was splitting with Fox can now yeah. all come to him. Okay. Um, and uh, I don't see him, but but he's a lot like Trump in the sense that he wants revenge. Yeah. So. Once he gets back on, and I do see him getting back on the horse or getting back in the saddle as far as like having his followers and making his money. Yeah, he'll be right um, back out somewhere. He'll get right back out somewhere. And yeah. then once he gets that, then I think he's going to be more of a pain in the side of, of people. But right now he's got to sort some things out. So I don't see him running for um, president. Um, yeah. Uh, so Cheryl Gibson's, <laughs> it turns out RT is like a Russia, a Russia media company, state, state media. Um, and they, they did, I think, come on state media publicly and offer him a job. Uh, he's not going to go work directly with Russia. The money is in America. I'm sorry to say there's still going to be another, you know, five years of good grift. Uh, for him to at least three years, although something is coming for him. You know, like I said, five. And then I, I said, no, 
three. And then I was like, maybe some, somebody's, well, Smith, Jack Smith is coming for Tucker. Jack Smith is coming for Tucker. So Mr. Tuckums might find that he gets to understand what it's like to share a toilet. So we'll see about that. Cause I don't, I don't think oh, okay. he's, I don't see him being protected. I don't see him. I don't see his money protecting him. It might be it. You know, it, they're showing me Bannon, right? Bannon's been in jail. And in some ways it just gives them street cred. You know, now they got, now they're cool because they, the man, you know, the Democrats put me in prison. So Tucker might actually do a little stint in some prison, but he'll come right out and be swinging. He'll come right out and swing. He's, he's a, some of these evil people are like the energizer bunny. You just, it's just hard to knock them down and get them to stay down. Yeah. How about one or two more questions? And then we're going to wrap this up. Cause we have been going for an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> Terry, you are like, so like, um, we're tuned into the same psychic satellite. I was getting Martha Stewart too. It, like Martha Stewart did her time, came out, reinvented herself. Um, I don't think Martha Stewart is anywhere, anything like Tucker, but exactly that kind of thing where you there, there it is the precedent. You can go to prison, you can come out and you can get right back into media and you can make a name for yourself again. Yeah, I do see him in prison. It doesn't, I didn't know. I saw him getting back up and doing some kind of radio show, but I didn't look much past that. I know, right? Well, I that's when I said five years and the guides were like, no. And then I was like, three years. And they were like, no. And I was like, well, well maybe I need to look at this. <laughs> What's going yeah. on? You know, if you're going to have, have a time of law and order them. coming in, that's not going to work for him to keep doing all that. That's uh, right. Whatever that's he's right. doing. We're going into the law and order. That's exactly yeah. right. He he is rich and he will be rich, but do you remember they're showing me Alex? Is it Alex Jones that got yeah. that lost almost a million dollars or more than a yeah. million, right? I mean, these rich people are now having to pay the price. Um, look at Fox, you know, they, they're not, he isn't. I don't, I'm telling you guys, when I went into five years, there was no Tucker. I scaled it back to three years. They're sort of like a limpy, kind of like a, you know, oh man, I hurt. Like that hurt. Like get, get the name of that bus, right? I don't think he's going to bounce back to his, I just don't see it. I don't yeah. see him bouncing back to that popularity because yeah. we are going to change. We are going to monitor free speech. People will yeah. have to be responsible. I and saw it. Kind yeah, of stuff thought... won't be allowed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I saw Fox News just being rolled right over like a truck's rolling over them. Looks yeah. more like a school bus, actually. A school just bus. squash. Yeah, I, I agree. Some people say, oh, they're going to be just change a little bit. I see them getting steam. They're going to be steamrolled. And that correspondence dinner was so amazing. It was. I laughed till I almost peed my pants. I was crying. It was so funny. That guy was funny. Biden was good, but that Biden was point on yeah but that uh the um roy was really funny but um i saw i looked out in the audience and when i see people i can read them like a clock sometimes there's this young black announcer on fox news and he was listening to roy and i saw it on his face i was like oh my god he was like he was i can't make the face he was making but i could see it in his eyes he goes i'm on the wrong side yeah. Because nice. the people on Fox, they don't even hear what's going on. They're in this like little world of like, uh, uh, let's look at Hunter Biden's laptop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. So that's great. So this guy sitting in the audience is realizing that he's on the losing team and that he's he he's needs to start moving young, over. A young, I can't remember his name. He's a young black guy. I see him on Fox. And they all have like this mean look in their eye. I'm like, wow. <laughs> they look like they want to eat somebody for lunch or punch them in the face or something. Their <laughs> eyes are like, mm. that's true. I can just see. I don't know if other people can see that, but I'm like, oh yeah. And when they don't have that look, they're either not as mean on their show as the, some of the other announcers, 
or they just don't fit like that lady Greta. She never stayed with them. She had a different, because all the women have their hair all done and the high heels and every, you know, makeup and everything. They're not, they don't look real or something. I don't know. It's just weird. But anyway, I saw him. I don't know his name, but I just saw, I was like, oh my God, he's looking like, oh, wow. I, that's like the first time I ever heard that stuff. Like they really don't hear the other news. It's, it's right. weird. So two things, um, Denise G., I know we can't monitor our, our free speech with our Supreme Court, our current Supreme Court, but I'm telling you guys, big things are getting ready to happen. I think Roberts can go, Alito can go, Roberts can go, Kavanaugh can go, and, and Thomas. And I know that sounds crazy, but I'm telling you, the light, just look at the things that have happened that we never thought would happen. We never thought. Tucker, we never thought Tucker would get fired. They unceremoniously fired him. He was probably trying to use his past to get into the office when it didn't work. They didn't even tell the man, right? So think about all these things that are happening that we never thought would happen. It's more is coming. The Supreme Court is going to change dramatically. I feel like, again, timing is hard, but I feel like you're going to see Big changes in the Supreme Court between now and next year around May or June. I think at least three justices will no longer be there. Wow. And I think that we're going to have, because see, this is that tipping of the table that guides kept talking about. We're going to have these changes that are, you know, when you have a few Congress people being indicted, you've got a president, an ex-president being indicted. Every, that the the justice it's like Sybil said earlier the justice is is sort of it's the it's the law and order energy it's just not it it hasn't been here obviously but now it is it came late to the party now it's rolling up its sleeves and it's saying we got some work to do so I really think that that's um Gorsuch, I I mean all of them. I have a friend. I'll I'll just go ahead and shock you guys. Y'all want me to shock you? I'll shock yeah. you. Sit down. I have a friend who I'm trying to get on YouTube. He is um a good dear friend of mine and he is amazing. He is an amazing psychic. And he told me that he saw within 2 years almost everybody gone from the Supreme Court and Kagan being the chief. He saw all the Republicans gone and some of the Democrats and not the Democrats might not be going for, you know, some sort of, you know, ethical problem. It could be a health problem. It could be something like that. But he saw an entire change of the Supreme Court with Kagan being the chief justice. And I'm telling you, this guy is accurate. So when he says things like that, I make a little note to myself. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just going to put that over here and <laughs> see what happens. But uh, we can't, I'm trying to put him on. Trust me. I'm not even going to say his name, but you know, he's, um, I'm trying. Trust me. How you? I've, I've tried for a year. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, so big changes, guys. Changes you can't even wrap your head around. Again, did we ever think Tucker would go down? No. Did we ever think that uh, Trump would be indicted? No. Just hold on. It's really happening. It's really, really happening. Um, so, um, yeah, Sotomayor has health problems. And, and he, she was one of the ones yeah. who he saw stepping down. And I was like, yeah. you know, and, you know, I questioned. I'm like, what? What are you seeing? He's like, I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know how. I just, this is what I see. So that could be a really big change, you know, plus I really think we have to extend the Supreme Court. We don't have enough justices to match all the district courts. So that's how we have this shadow docket thing where the judges have to hear cases and decide if they're going to go before the Supreme Court outside of the Supreme Court. So we really need to even extend the Supreme Court. So we have a judge, a Supreme Court judge for every district. It, nothing is working. We need to fix this. We need to overhaul it. So there's a lot uh, going on. 
Sterling said the same thing, Celeste. Oh, I'll have to tell my friend. Um, Andrea predicted that too. See, I love that. Um, I love, I, I can't really, I can't really watch other First of all, I don't have time, but second of all, it messes with my, my own guides and my own, I start to doubt myself. I really just need to be a clear connection to them. So my I guide showed me, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. My guide showed me the Supreme court is they're supposed to be like this above reproach, very ethical, you know, governing themselves to make, you know, pillars of our democracy. And they showed me they're more like a gang. Yeah. And then I saw all these dogs, like hound dogs, like <laughs> let the dogs out or something like yeah. there were, then those were reporters sniffing them out. So yeah. I've predicted three are going to go, but I, I didn't see Sotomayor. I didn't see, um, I'm not sure who the other Democrat he said that would be going. Um, but he saw Kagan clearly. He said he saw Kagan as chief justice. Yeah, I could see that. Um, but, yeah. And I love Katanji and she's new. So I hope she, she stays. Uh, but we don't, we don't know. We, we just, we just don't know. Right. So, we have to be able to open up our mind and allow. I, I feel like she will stay. I feel like she has a lot of power. She's, she, she's got a, light, lot, a big purpose, a lot of light around her. Her light is beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, Michael, I agree with you. The problem is only nine justices. It's easy to pay them off. Um, it, it shouldn't be easy to pay them off if there were five justices. It shouldn't be easy to pay them off if there's 15 justices. That is the problem. It's not the number of justices. It's the fact that they can be paid off, right? Um, you know, you might say if we had 25 justices, maybe maybe there wouldn't, maybe odds are that they couldn't all be paid off, right? Uh, we're we're going to, I think we are going to do term limits. Uh, not, not, I don't feel that this is soon. Um, I think this country is going to go through some things, y'all. We're going to have yep. to really get, we're going to have to open the hood and look at the, the amendments of the Constitution because they're not up to date. We're going to need to go in and get some new amendments. We're going to really work on the entire Constitution and amendments. Um, and that's it's going to be good, but but it, it's going to be challenging, you know? Okay, last question. Freda Stenger says, is Jack Smith looking at Hannity? You guys have been asking about Hannity. I saw several questions about Hannity. Hannity, uh, didn't Hannity get fired from Fox already, or is he still there? You guys tell He's me. He's there. He's there. Oh shoot. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can't believe you can watch Fox. You're you got more uh, ovaries than I do. Me? I yeah. I can't watch Fox. Well, we would have heard if he was um, if he was off because yeah. he's like a main uh, guy there. Yeah, Pluto and Aquarius. You're absolutely right. That's what we're getting ready to do. Um, so is Hannity, is Hannity still there then? So Hannity will go. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, remember Sybil said she saw like, you know, the bus rolling over Fox. I, I see Fox getting broken apart. Right. You know, like. Fox Sports being one thing, Fox whatever. You may even see that Fox does like a HGTV. You know, I really think they've learned that this pol political stuff is has cost them too much money. So I think you're going to see them try to go. They're they're going to decentralize and segment the businesses, and maybe the Suns will get this one, and this Sun will get this one. Like there might be a Fox Science. You know what I mean? I really feel like they're going to sooner or later, they're just going to dismantle it. They're going to dismantle the political yeah. part of Fox. And that means Hannity's going to go. And all those people are going to go, not just yeah, Hannity, but go. all of them. I, I see. It's funny. What I'm looking at is, um, is Jack Smith looking at him. Yeah. He's looking at him and he's uh, maybe he's probably going to talk to him. Cause I see Hannity. He, he might give something up. He's going to, I see him passing over a document. He's talking to them. 
So he's going to have to answer questions or he's going to be questioned, but it's, it's really funny. It's, it's almost like a cartoon. I feel like, you know, the, those handlebar mustaches, like a bad guy on the cartoons, because when he's talking to him, all of a sudden Hannity's must gets a mustache and it goes, and his hair goes, <laughs> like it's making his hair stand on end. He's like <laughs> freaking freaking out. <laughs> <He is not. laughs> yeah. I'm glad you're not looking at his underwear to see what's happening down there. Jeez Louise, it's, girl. Yeah, it's making him his skin crawl, his hair crawl, and he's he's kind of you know he's got uh, he's got some crap and stuff, but uh, he looks like he's going to give him some information. Maybe not a lot, but he's gonna he's not going to lie to the uh, uh, to a yeah. They're going to talk to him. Yep. Yeah. So I, I think I think you're. I see him right. leaving too. Yes, they're they're all leaving because Fox isn't yeah. going to be recognizable. I've always said this. It's going to be broken up into little sub subsidiaries, and and then that way, it it's less of a target, right? Uh, number one, and number two, they can focus on segments that are that are profitable for them. I really think they're going to get out of the politics. And somebody asked about own and uh, whatever, all these other America, whatever that is. Um, they're, they're going to go after these people. It, we're not going to have a fairness doctrine the way we did uh, because, you know, like fairness in journalism, because we have cable, we have TikTok, we have YouTube. We, we have too many, too many platforms. But we are going to strengthen and tighten the free speech. We're going to, just like the Second Amendment, that's a bunch of baloney. So we're going to go back and we're going to really reimagine and tighten and strengthen the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, the, the one, the 25th, whatever it is that says if your president is crazy, you got to get rid of him. Uh, we're we're going we're gonna to really work on this stuff. So I don't see, I don't, I don't see these media companies being out. I think they're going to go underground to the dark internet and, and that's where they're going to live. So that's what I, what do you get civil? And then we'll close it down. Yeah. I agree with you on that. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I see Fox news getting crushed when you saw, you said you saw him leaving. I saw actually saw him walking out the door with his briefcase. I just feel like it, he knows he's a bad guy and they're going to kind of exp like he's getting exposed. He has to uh, testify. I just, it's, it's weird. The way I saw his, like this mustache and his hair going, it just looks weird. Crazy. Like it's making him. Yeah. Cause yeah. It reminds me of like a 1930s person with the waxed mustache with the hair that's you know, like the banker on Monopoly. Is that who you saw yes. as the banker on Monopoly? <laughs> yeah, that's kind with of funny. The hair in the middle and parted and the little ring. Yeah. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> He's probably been a crook before. Maybe it's, it's his totally life, but you know, his life. That's exactly right. You Maybe just I'll go to Earth next time and I won't be a crook. <laughs> <laughs> you saw him in his last his last life he's and he's his, like, working on his last incarnation of he, being a he crook. morphed back into who he was a crooked before. banker <laughs> yes 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 or some, some kind of bad guy because yeah. he you know he does the it's the great american and the football he used to throw the football around and all that stuff and uh, no it's no an act. it's all an act yeah <laughs> it's funny all right guys snidely whiplash that's hilarious oh there you know. go oh well, you guys know this guy yeah. snidely whiplash exactly. oh, my god. <laughs> oh my god now we all need bleach in our eyeballs um <laughs> all right okay great Yes, we're still on Sheila Inquisitive Tarot. We've been on for an hour and a half or even more. We we we're we'll gonna be here all more. night. No, just kidding. <laughs> we're gonna yeah. I mean, this is the thing. You could talk about this stuff for hours and hours and hours, <laughs> except for that uh we don't have the energy to do that. Uh so thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Please check out Sybil's channel. She has a YouTube channel, she's a healer, she's an amazing healer, guys. I I, I, I experienced it. She was in my thyroid and I could feel my thyroid moving around and I wasn't doing it. 
Okay. She's an amazing healer. So check her out. Um, and you're looking good. <laughs> I honestly, thank you. Yes. Um, she tuned up all my chakras. It was really a great healing. So thank you. So well, I appreciate that. And she you has can have it. It's, I, it's not me. It's the guy. It happens. It just happens. I, I, it's, it's just, it's like, you know, the guy just, uh, yeah. Sybil just turns into like this ancient healer that she's always been like her personality, you know, like she just gets, I have no control. She gets zeroed <laughs> in on you and it's really cool. So it's not um, me, it's the guide. <laughs> well, yeah. Some of mm. us need to go sage, uh, get this energy off of us. Absolutely. Clear yeah. your energy before you go to bed. Uh, you know, take a shower or say a prayer or just release whatever, um, that would be a great idea. There's so much happening, but we are going to a good place. It's like, it's, it's like, um, coal in the earth under pressure turns to diamonds. So we're going, you know, we're going through all this stuff <laughs> unless you can just, you know, go in a cave and well, I'll, it, I'll see you in, uh, see you in a couple years. Yeah. Things will be better in a couple of years and then we'll take a little while after that, but it's That's a right. lot going on. So it's good. We're going in a good direction. We going really are. Amazing stuff is happening. The light is coming in. And so we can be thankful and grateful for that. <laughs> it's true. It's yeah. true. When you get down, just look around for the good things that are happening and remind yourself about the good things that have happened. It'll, it'll boost your energy. It'll boost your vibration. And that brings good things within your vibration. It's a vibrational match yeah. to other good things. And that's yeah. what we want, right? The energy has changed. I'm noticing so many amazing, yes. like, um, just in the last couple months, I like around the time he was indicted, it's like, Oh yeah. And I saw you with the cannon and I still have my little piece of incense. I'm waiting for the Jack Smith or the Fawny Willis and I'm going to burn my incense. Nice. I already planted a sunflower for Ukraine. Uh, Me too. That's okay. funny. Me too. Yeah. That's great. But good things are going to happen. Good things are happening. So thank you so much for having me on. It was it, never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. <laughs> Thank you, Sybil. Thanks, everybody. You guys take really good care of yourselves. We'll see you again right here on this channel, okay? We'll see you again. Take care. Bye, everybody.